Well, we have a special treat for you today on McBlog. Uh, in my view, one of the best impersonators of Vice President Kamala Harris that you will ever come across. And I want to welcome Esti Pauti to the show. Esti, thanks for your time. I am sure you have been incredibly uh, busy doing these impersonations, which we will get you into character shortly. But just how did you get into it in the first place? I was genuinely by chance. I was making TikToks, having, having, you know, fooling around with some skit comedy uh, during COVID, actually, when things were rather boring during lockdowns. And um, somebody had mentioned that I sounded like her in one of my videos. And I did a reaction video to that uh, with my attempt at an impression of Kamala. And it just uh, snowballed from there. So. And, and the interesting thing is that not only, as we will soon see, do you sound like her, but you look like her, which, um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's a double bonus, isn't it? I mean, I I like to say I can contort my face like her. I don't want to say that there's any resemblances. Yeah, she's not a bad looking lady, mm. but uh, she definitely has a cadence to her that is unique. And yep. she she says very silly things as well. So she's she's a fun character to play with. Now, uh, you must be, I mean, the election is next week, so you must be incredibly busy. I mean, uh, you know, media requests, I know it's been hard for us to just track down this time together. Um, there must be yeah. a lot of people just wanting to have a bit of fun during this election. Yeah, I mean, listen, everybody wants to add levity to the situation. This has always been a very big part of pop culture, uh, especially in America, but I think it's worldwide. Mm. You know, you make fun of political figures. And uh, I see other Kamala's popping up. I see a lot of uh, Donald Trump's. I've been, you know, fortunate enough to work with some of them. And it's just people, you know, tr like I said, trying to really add levity to a very serious and chaotic time uh, in our elections. The thing I've noticed that is that with both Trump, uh, but especially with Kamala Harris, there's no shortage of material for you. <laughs> no. Honestly, not at all. She she surprises me every day. I think she, you know, people assume that I'm not surprised, but I am. Mm -hmm. You know, she comes mm -hmm. out with new accents. She panders to, you know, different uh, races of people in different ways. So she's genuinely the gift that keeps on giving in this industry. Mm -hmm. And if she does get elected as president, help us all, uh, you're going to be busy <laughs> for the next four years, aren't you? I mean, that's your career for the next four years. Yeah, it's gonna stay. It's gonna continue to be lucrative, but you know, Donald mm -hmm. Trump has my vote. I really, you know, that's that's a no-brainer for me. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, and oh, look. Sorry, just a quick question about New Zealand. Have you been to New Zealand? I have not. Sadly, I heard it's beautiful. I, you know, I would love to to come visit mm -hmm. your beautiful country. And God mm -hmm. willing, maybe someday I will. Okay, we'll see what we can do on that one. Okay, well, look, uh, we will just take a, uh, I'll just play a little intro and then we will meet uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. So stand by. Well, it's an honour and a privilege to meet the Vice President Kamala Harris, who could be elected President of the United States in the upcoming election. Uh, Kamala, really appreciate your time. How's the campaign been going for you? You know, we've been really busy and, uh, you know, I expect a gift basket of some sort for, you know, me even doing this for you. You know, I have to convince Americans to vote for me. I don't have time to sit and speak to New Zealanders or New, is it New Zealanders? New Zealanders like yourself. Uh, you know, but you know, I have to do it for the world. The people want to see the interviews, so it's just been a very busy time. Quite frankly, I'm tired. <laughs> uh, have, how have you found the public speaking gigs? I mean, you've been in front of big crowds. You've uh, had to use the teleprompter a lot. Has that been quite a a uh, test, a task? You know, many people have been fired in the recent weeks. Uh, you know, at one time a teleprompter got unplugged. It was completely ridiculous and unnecessary. The amount of strain that I felt, uh, you know, it's really hard. You know, you have to you have to know what to say, when to say it, and you know that's been a big challenge. So we, but we've dealt with that accordingly as we move along right now. Now, look, some people in New Zealand may be considering actually supporting Trump. Uh, what would you say to them? 
Well, you know, you know, look, the choice is clear. You know, if you want a closed border, which I don't understand why anybody would want that, it's like closing the window and, you know, keeping the fresh air out. You know, it's completely ridiculous. It's inhumane. So if you want that, if you want someone to close the window, well, then you go and vote for Donald Trump. But if you want an open border where, you know, no human being is illegal, no human being is illegal, you know, we have unity and, you know, it's just it's just a joyful time for everyone, right? It's just a joyful time. So I want everyone to understand that voting for Donald Trump is voting for closing that window to stop that friendship from occurring with other countries. And, you know, I think the choice is clear, you know, safe borders or friendship. (laughs) It seems like that uh, your rival Trump is having a bit of fun. I mean, he's been working at McDonald's where you worked, apparently, and he uh, also drove a garbage truck uh, recently because of what your boss Biden said. Um, Trump seems to be having fun. Are you having as much fun in this campaign? Well, you know, he's a very unserious man. I have different kinds of fun. My fun comes from Bolivia, sometimes from Hunter Biden. Uh, you know, Donald Trump is a clown. He comes out here and he thinks that that's supposed to prove something. You know, he's the one that had a comedian come on stage and call all the Puerto Ricans garbage. All right. It's only OK if we do that. So, you know, I don't understand where he comes off doing, you know, p- pulling off stunts like this. We're, t- you know, we're doing hard serious work for the people of america you know and that includes having you know drag drag dancers reading children's playtime stories i mean it's we're, we're much more serious than that so donald trump can continue his shenanigans but we will unburden what has been well it's interesting you say that because i was just going to say unburdening what has been you've you've sort of been given a hard time for repeating similar phrases but Look, when you're speaking so often, I guess you've got to, you're limited to the, you know, repeating same sentences, eh? I mean, that's, it's a bit unfair, the criticism on you. Oh, it's definitely unfair. People don't take into consideration that I've been reading bedtime stories to Joe Biden for three and a half years. You know, so there's a lot of repetition there. Those children, you know, those children's books are geared you know, to children. <laughs> but, you know, Joe... Well, you know, he insists that I say it over and over and over again. People really don't give me the credit that I deserve, you know, applying the diaper cream, reading the stories, taking him out for endless cones of ice cream. You know, it's really taking a toll neurologically on me. So, you know, that being said, I think that people should show me a little more grace. Well, just your uh, word of encouragement to uh, people in New Zealand who are supporting you. I think I've met both of them. But uh, what would you say to New Zealanders uh, supporting Kamala Harris for president? Oh, I say thank you. Thank you so much. And listen, you know, you come across that border and you come vote for me. All right. (laughs) Don't let that silly little border stop you. All right. You we, we take swimmers, we take runners, we, we'll take them from all over. And you know what? For a limited time only on the taxpayer dime, we'll fly you over. So, you know, send me a message. I'll get it to my people. But, you know, absolutely, the more the merrier. <laughs> uh, just finally, um, if you become President Kamala Harris, uh, do you think we will see you in New Zealand at some stage, you know, uh, to visit Hobbiton and uh, some of our other beautiful places around New Zealand? You know, I haven't been to Europe yet. So, you know, I have a list, you know, I have a list on my plate. Uh, quite frankly, I wouldn't find a reason to to really go there. That's an awkward question, but you know, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, really appreciate your time. We know how busy you must be and um, all the best for next week. And uh, perhaps we'll catch up with you uh, after that to see how you're feeling. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you again. Goodbye to the Dutch people.